Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. This lesson is part of Project Pack 04. My name is Rick. Hey, I'm Maria, and Project Pack 04 is designed around a specific project we're calling the Zentangle Spinner. Today is the fourth day in the series, but you can watch these out of order, and it all comes together in the end. Okay, I am uh, starting out with a tangle called Static, which was one of our really first tangles. And it was just, you put down a zigzag line through probably the, the widest part of your uh, section. And then it's aura, 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 aura. Aura from one side all the way to the edge and then flipping it over and doing the same thing on the other side. Real simple, real simple, real effective. And one of the reasons you flip it over is it's easier to follow um, the pattern that you're oaring if your pen isn't covering it. So it would be to the left if you're right-handed and to the right if you're left-handed. So it's an easy uh, pattern, and you can see that it doesn't take very long. And it's very cool. I, I think so. Absolutely. Okay, the next uh, pattern is called Molygon, and this is a great um, tangle. It's a, it's a little bit, uh, there's some tricks to it. And the, and the first trick is when you aura that first molygon shape, you go about three quarters of the way instead of all the way. That way your, your uh, molygons stay about the same size, and, and unless you want them to get really big. So then you can go and, um, add molygons on the other side. Uh, this works It works pretty simply. You can see at that three-quarter point. And you can, you can make them go in any direction. You can change the size. You can make them come off another side. You can use it to fill it in, just like she did there. That's cool. Now, what are we going to put inside of these molygons, right? So you fill them just like... Um, like uh, well, triple E. Yeah, so we're, Maria's just auraing the inside of these like she did, uh, if you remember how she did the inside of floors, for instance. Right. And then once she gets them all aurored, well, maybe she'll put something else inside. And sure enough. There you go. Oh, so put a sort of a perk type thing in there. It's kind of fun. And we had a question, uh, or we often get a question, oh, what about teaching for people who are left-handed? And we came up with this idea that since there's no up or down or left or right in Zentangle, that if you're left-handed, just uh, put, put your uh, computer or phone or, or tablet next to a mirror and watch it in the mirror, and anybody who's drawing with their right hand is now drawing with their left hand. And it works perfectly. And it works perfectly. Perfectly. So just get a good-sized mirror so that that's what you're looking at. Because <clears throat> there really is no left or right. So the next pattern, the tangle, is called Noom, N-O-O-M. The whole name is Noom Repus. And it was named after the supermoon, which is Noom Repus spelled backwards. And it's a, it's a great um, border tangle. Uh, but also, once you start putting them together, it becomes a, a regular tangle, too. Uh, but we start with these S shapes that are sort of um, next to each other. And then combining, you can see what I'm, I'm, I'm combining the lines and right up to that point where you can see see how it's almost going to the edge right <clears throat> it's sort of pointing to the edge of the other of the end of the other s there. right so once you've done it in that direction now well, turn the tile around so you you're you're sh you're div putting together sort of a leaf shape and um, so, so you can see where it, you hit that same spot where they come together. See when, yeah, right there. That's where you want to come, and that 
that's the key in this particular tangle. So the reason it was called Numripus, as Maria said, for supermoon, is that we introduced this tangle at a uh, reunion of Zen Tangle teachers, of CZTs, and it happened to be on the day of the supermoon that this was introduced, and we had a, everybody offer their ideas of what the uh, name should be, and, and that was the one that was chosen. That was 2016. Yeah. At uh, Zen Again, the first Zen Again. So again, that uh, coloring the background really brings forward that. It's, it's a great contrast. So this is the one that brings it all together. So you can see there's this opposite S shape that's combining those middle lines that just seem to be hanging there. And it makes like a chain effect that's totally unexpected. Uh, that's kind of a, the key to it there. And, and like they're weaving in and out of each other in a sort of quasi-impossible way. You have to look this one up because this is really worth pursuing. And then we're just connecting him. And you can see lots of examples of what people have done on the uh, app. So if you download the Zentangle Mosaic, which is on iPhone and Android, and for free you can you can search um, just search Noom Repus or search any of the tangles we're doing, and you can see what people all over the world have done. This next tangle is called Umble, U-M-B-L-E. And I remember seeing this in a magazine, and it was a pattern that was on, uh, I don't know, in a fashion magazine. Yeah, on it a was on a dress. A I think dress we, or a we blouse. cut it out, and it's in one of our yeah. uh, catalogs. And it was just the coolest thing. I thought it was... Uh, sort of bold and you know cool. well, and also it it is uh it, it reinforces our <laughs> whole uh approach with aura which we're doing now and then you'll see how we incorporate it with um with hollowball so i started out by putting these curved lines on the corners and uh and now we're oaring around them to give them a, a shape uh, so now that's going to be our shape that we're going to reproduce over and over. So now we're going from corner to corner and making that same type of uh, line. And then drawing behind. And then... Drawing behind. Making that first basic shape. And then go back and aura that 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 little bit of aura sets it off, and it really makes a difference and adds a lot of interest. That the different widths of auraing is becomes part of the pattern. Mm -hmm. So we're going to turn our tile and do that again, corner to corner. And so now, we're going to add another one. We're going to aura that first um, set of corner lines that we did, making them a little narrower to give it the illusion of that it's going down deep into the paper. It's a really cool tangle. It's like a spider web. So real sense of depth there. Very sweet. And the last tangle on this wedge is going to be my mooka. I have to have mooka. And we're just going to do some simple, uh, simple ones, not too complicated. This, I think, is one of your go-to tangles, right? It's one right? of my always go-to tangles. So I'm, I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite corner here. And I like to have my mukas sort of slightly kissing. You can see where they, 
they come together and just sort of just touch so that it sort of has a, uh, a support system. It's kind of cool. Right. Here we go, just touching. <clears throat> Flip it over, do the same, or almost the same, not exactly the same. But I love that approach of, of how you do yours, very different. So the same, the whole principle of Mukha are those little tendrils at the end. Everybody has their own style, and the idea is not that you should, your mukha should look just like Maria's or anybody else's, but that you can use that approach to develop your own style and see where that goes as the more you do it. So I'm basically doing the same thing from each corner, but it doesn't really look like it. It just looks pretty. Awesome. Looks like I'm going to just aura in the middle there. Yeah, so that's an approach on, on Mukha and many tangles is, is just to add that extra. extra but the bit. reason I can aura is because I made these sections by the, the kissing Mukhas. And there, there's enough white space in there to, uh, to fit it in as well. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so we've gotten down all, oh, no, there's another, there's another. Great. Okay. There we go with the ink. It's time for some graphite. So on the uh, static, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go below where the lines, uh, the, the corners sort of meet. It almost uh, begs for that kind of uh, shades right there. So you like all of the lines that are going in one direction. So she's putting graphite on one set of, uh, of lines. The idea to uh, do like like a hill and vale, so like valleys, and uh, give that idea of the sun rising and hitting one side of the hill. And smooth that in with a tortillon. On the molly gone here, it looks like I'm uh, going to just add a little bit of graphite inside where the perk is, that perk part, those little smiles. And then again, where, where the molly gones all meet, you can sort of see little uh, places that seem to be begging for that to, uh, to get a little drama. I like how you left that uh, center circle on many of them open. So that's the whole <laughs> idea of adding shades of gray is to leave leave that uh, range of uh, right. white to dark. And I'm going to do the edges because I think it, it, it would uh, kind of tidy it up. And then that pushes up the the, the borders on either side. So you may have noticed the numbers and letters on the spinner. 
Uh, we put those in there to add uh, more information. If you ever want to spin for other reasons, you know, numbers or letters or have other things that you're spinning for, uh, so that gives uh, the spinner more value, I yeah. think. So I like what you're doing here is just the doing the alternate. Yeah. Alternate. Isn't that kind of cool, huh? Like these interlocking yin-yang circles almost. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Very cool. On the umbo, we're just going to focus on the the one the uh, keeping the uh, the first bands pretty uh, open, and then starting to add shades as as they get deeper and deeper. Yeah, you can already see the yeah the emphasizing the over and under. This is a great tangle to shade because the elements are large enough to uh, be discreet and then the uh, the tortillon just works its magic mm. even just with just that little bit it, it mm. uh, you can see how it goes down deep cool look at that i love that Wow. Yeah, it'll be fun just to, you know, rewind and go back and see what it looks like before and after shading, just to, to give you a, an example of uh, the impact. You know, that's kind of cool. We're just going to um, add some gray into, into the aura parts and let the uh, mucus stand on them or on their own. We're working with especially small sections, so uh, so we can't get into a lot of heavy shading details. But this is a great, great idea that you don't have to. Uh, you know, it's just another way of of using elements of the tangle to uh, to add graphite and and contrast. And little C shapes just to uh, announce. Yeah, how how uh, round those must be. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the tortillon magic comes in. That's awesome. Well, thanks for tangling with us. And uh, we've got another wedge down, and we're going to, uh, we have a few more to do, so uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow or whenever you view these and we look forward to seeing yours so have a great time and thank you very much bye bye now <laughs>